Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be doing a review on the Holt Industries pneumatic air operated fluid extractor that you can get from Harbor Freight. This specific one ran me, I believe about $129.99 from Harbor Freight. And there is the model number there. This extractor is suited for mainly gear oil, transmission fluid, engine oil, coolant, brake fluid, and more. Uh, you do, cannot do any harsh chemicals such as gasoline. I believe they say it might rot out all of the gaskets and um, just prematurely fail the unit itself. And again, there's no warranty covering if you go ahead and try to extract fuel with it. Here it just says oversized base prevents tipping. As you can see right there, there's the base. And it also includes a 0 0.24, 0 0.275 inch, and a 0 0.385 um, siphon hoses and also a 84.5 inch brake bleeding hose with the shutoff valve. And guys, I've never used air operated fluid extractors or fluid extractors in general. This was my first time and I decided to pick this one up instead of the manual one. And obviously I got a little bit too excited. I used the brake one and I did not use the brake tip on here. All I did was remove this clear uh, hose here and attached one of the longer ones. It was actually this one here and I used it to extract oil from a John Deere X300 riding mower. And now realizing that that's not the proper way of doing it, you just use one of these plastic uh, hoses that came with it instead of actually using a shutoff and a plastic hose. So we're just gonna be using a plastic hose today for today's demo. We got a Toro Tie Master. And if you guys don't know, it is pretty much, it's not impossible obviously, but I'd say it's kind of harder to change the oil on these guys because here's the dipstick tube right here. And as you can see, you got all this body and frame. You have to tip this unit over in order to change the oil. So what we're gonna do today is run the machine right now for about, again, five, 10 minutes, just to kind of warm up the oil a little bit. And then I'll show you kind of the process of plugging it, plugging it in, throwing this uh, siphon hose on there and turning it on and sucking all that oil out. So without further delay, let's go ahead and start this machine. Okay, so we ran the Toro for about seven minutes and I believe that is plenty of time for the oil to heat up. And as you can hear, you might hear the muffler cracking, but anyways, we are ready for the extraction process. The first thing you'll need to do is obviously connect one of your hoses. I'm choosing the biggest one or the one with the biggest opening just to make this process a little bit easier. And we're gonna take this end, as you can see, uh, this coupler has different ridges on it. So this one with its with a curved ridge is gonna go inside the hose. And this one is gonna go inside of the uh, tube here. So we're gonna go ahead and install it like so. Push it all the way back until it's firm. And if you're a small engine mechanic, this is a good time to check the condition of the oil and also check your level. But if you're changing it anyway, I guess it doesn't matter unless the customer wants a condition report. And as you can see, we are pretty low on the oil reading on the dipstick tube. So we're gonna go ahead and change this oil. This is actually a personal mower, so I don't really care much of the reading. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and install this tube all the way in like so. And make sure you go all the way down until you reach the bottom of the oil sump. And I hope that everybody knows you do have to have an air compressor to use this unit. Now, you can use anything as tiny as a two gallon compressor, I believe, but I got a 26 gallon cobalt 150 max PSI compressor, and that is perfect for this application. I believe this fitting is either a I slash E or a I slash M. It's just a standard hose fitting. And what we're gonna do is connect it like so. And it, as soon as you turn this valve to the vertical position, the air will start to feed through the system and it will start to pump out the oil from the tube. Okay, basically we're all ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I usually like to hold this hose down a bit to the bottom of the engine sump, just because it does like to lift up. These, these hoses 
are they have some flexibility in them so they like to pop up a little bit so just make sure to hold the hose all the way down and when you turn that so when you turn that valve on this hose isn't actually just sucking in air it's actually sucking in all the oil so without further delay watch how i use this unit and we'll see how fast it can pump out the soil okay so here we go pushing this all the way down and turning the valve to the vertical position as you can see there goes the oil and it is draining into the tank Again, the engine is, engine oil is hot. I can feel the hose kind of heating up a bit, which is good. Not much oil in these small engines, so it will be really quick of a process. Should only take about a minute, I believe, but we'll see. Compressor is still sitting at around 130 psi. We haven't dropped down below 120, but once we do, you might hear it kick on. As you can start seeing less oil coming through the tube, we are getting a lot of air coming through the line now. We're almost done with our uh, Oil extraction. What I like to do, especially on mowers, is just tip them back so that more oil comes through the tube, or more oil is drawn in through the tube. We're basically almost done here. Yeah, so we're basically done. So we didn't even have the compressor kick on, which is great. We were sitting at around 150 PSI. We dropped down to right around 120, maybe just a little bit under, but anytime this compressor can kick on if we turn on that valve. But anyways, as you saw, quick process, especially if the oil is hot. Uh, comes out really fast. Again, this engine only takes about 20 ounces, so we pumped it out real quick. What I like to do is just leave the hose and all of the excess oil drain out just a little bit, just so we don't create a mess in the shop or on these mats. But yeah, I think that, I think that was really, you know, quick and convenient, especially if you have a machine or an engine that's hard to um, access uh, as far as draining the oil or to a drain plug. Here's one I really want to try, but this will be later in the season when I have the correct oil for this Raptor SDX. This is my personal uh, lawn mower or zero turn mower. And as you can see, we have the oil fill tube right there. And there is the drain all the way down there. And you have to get another tube and feed it through that hole right here or right down there on the frame and run the tube down so you can drain the oil. It's just a pain in the neck. Here's the oil filter as well. But again, it's just a pain in the neck, so that's another reason why I bought that oil extractor. And for all small engine mechanics out there, I do highly recommend you get a uh, either an air-operated or a manual fluid extractor like I have here. Again, this is my second time using it, and I got to say that this machine, or this, this unit here that I bought, is a great investment for your business, and this will save you a lot of time uh, when it comes down to oil changes and I'm not getting paid by Harbor Freight to, to say this or anything Harbor Freight did not send me this unit. I bought it with my own money just for my business my business practices and purposes and uh, But I again, I am highly satisfied with what I got and I'm highly satisfied with the product again the brand name is Holt Industries and here is just a few more specs Here's a spec sheet here. It holds 2.3 gallons, 60 to 150 PSI, and everything else there. And here's just uh, more information on here. If you don't want to make a trip down to Harbor Freight, and if you can't get the information online, here's all the information you need about it.
And another great thing about this unit is it does have a easy drain spout. So when the tank does get full, you could just simply remove your hose. And if you really want to, you can remove the rubber piece here as well. Um, that'll all come out. This piece does come out like that. And you can remove this collar as well. You don't have to, but you can. You can go ahead and disconnect your air line and drain the oil like so if you need to. So yeah, after you're done with the unit, I'm not too sure how you would store these hoses, but what I have figured out is there's a small hole right here and it goes kind of all the way down. There's, a, I believe, another tube inside of this um, uh, tank here. So what I did was I just fed this line in through here and connected it with one of these openings. This is just extra, I don't know if this is how it's meant to be, but we're just pushing the hose all the way down here and it's connected on the top. So that's just, I guess, a convenient way of storing uh, this type of hose. I'm not sure again if this is meant to be like that, but if somebody does know, let me know in the comments down below. And I'm very curious as to see how much oil we actually removed from the engine. So what I'm gonna do is use my USB uh, little endoscope that I got here connects to a phone and we can visually see what's inside of that engine sump and see how much oil we actually extracted. Again, I have not put any oil in there yet, uh, but we are going to after we get a good visual of, of that engine sump. Okay, so here we go. Okay, as you can see, there's still a little bit of oil left there that's okay that's usually normal with any oil change and there's the governor there try to go a little bit farther with this camera see how far we can go you can see there's the governor there. there's more oil there Yep, not much to it. Try to remove my camera from there. There we go. There you are. There's a good visual. Of what you would see in an engine. Now that I can actually see inside the motor and see what we're dealing with, I think a thinner hose would do much better than the thicker hose. The thicker hose obviously does a faster job, but a more cleaner job, I think we can get better results with the thinner one. So uh, let's go ahead and do the thinner one, run it through, and then check with our camera one more time. You know what, I got a better idea. What I think we're gonna do is run the camera alongside with the thinnest hose that came with this kit um, and then throw it down in there so we can actually get a visual of what we're gonna be sucking out. And I think that'll actually give us a better clear picture of where the oil is and what oil needs to be removed from the sump. Again, I would never do this to a customer, waste this much time. I'm just doing this as a kind of a review slash demonstration for you guys. But if this was for a client, I'd probably start, I'm gonna be starting to use the thinner one if it gives me uh, better results and get into tighter spots. I'm gonna be using the thinner one instead of the thicker one because I know the thinner one's a little bit more flexible and you can maneuver, maneuver it easier inside of these engine oil sumps. So without further delay, let's get the camera going and get the, um, extractor going as well. Here we go, we're gonna throw the camera in there first and then run our hose right alongside. So you should be able to see the hose coming out. There is the hose. And we got it all the way to the bottom. So let's just go ahead and turn on our vacuum.
Okay, that was pretty epic. I don't know about you guys, but we had the mower tipped back. As you can see at the end of the video, you could see some of the oil coming back to the uh, base of the engine, to the backside of the engine sump. And unfortunately, man, this tube is so hard and rigid, it doesn't flex inside the, uh, the engine itself. So we can't push it back into the front of the engine and we also can't tip it to the you know to the left or to the right it just goes straight down where it wants to so that's kind of one down flaw i guess we can get some tubing that's more flexible and connect it to here and run it down into the engine if you really want to clean out an engine uh, you can use a scope like i did and run a flexible tubing but unfortunately well actually for the diy or home use person or mechanic that really wouldn't matter. You just want to get, you know, the majority of the oil. We are just trying to collect as much uh, oil that was left over with the thinnest tube that came with the set. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, my final thoughts are, I think every small engine mechanic should buy or should invest into this kind of setup. Much easier to replace oil in machines, you know, lawn mowers, riding mowers, zero turn, any type of uh, four stroke engine. I believe this tool will come in handy definitely and especially if there are bad oil drain locations on uh, engines specifically kawasaki and uh, i know older tecumseh's also have really bad uh, drain plugs or drain plug locations on their snowblower so i hope you enjoyed this today's video yep there's me this is the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did go ahead and leave a like and comment down below Again, guys, your likes really do help us and in the YouTube algorithm and just to show your support. These videos do take a while to edit, to create, to think of, of I'm trying to think of different ways of showing the products off. And like, again, we did use the endoscope today to kind of give you a visual of how much oil this Holt Industries air pressure, um, air operated fluid extractor actually can pump out. So. Small engines, I think every small engine mechanic should invest into something like this. And I believe uh, it is worth definitely $129.99 from Harbor Freight. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, leave a like down below, or leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below saying, you know, what you liked about it. So about this experiment. But again, this has been Phil with Phil Small Engine Nation. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy this tool review video. And God bless you guys. We will see you in the next episode.